Hey, welcome to our class at Tuesday Night Beer School with me, Chad, of Chad's Beer Reviews, and my student, Christina, with Leo Cat. Yeah, with Leo. You went down. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're continuing with all German beer month, even though there's a lot more than four styles of German beer. So we did, last week we did the Hellesbach, so, which Helles means light or bright, remember? Yep. So what do you think we're going to do this week? Dark. Yep. This one's called Dunkelsbach. Overall impression, a strong, dark, malty German lager beer. Did I really need the word beer in there? That emphasizes the malty, rich, and somewhat toasty qualities of continental malts without being sweet in the finish. Comments, decoction mashing plays an important, fla- uh, important part of flavor development as it enhances the caramel and Maillard flavor aspects of the malt. Now, I copied and pasted this off a website because we've talked about this many times decoction mashing so never really gone into it yeah i'm just gonna read this real quick so decoction mashing the traditional method used in brewing beer especially german lagers involves removing a portion of the mash and boiling it before returning it to the main mash so like you know like the way you make beer it's like you get your um barley and whatever other like maybe oats or corn or whatever mm-hmm. like you get it like really warm you don't boil it and like you let that sit for like an hour or two and then you drain that that's called the mashing process yeah but with decoction mashing is what they do is before the hours up or whatever they take some of it out boil it and then put it back in and it's supposed this these are the benefits it's like enhanced maillard and different, it's supposed to make it different technique. yeah like more bready more toasty yeah, just is, is this is a, this is the kind of chemistry stuff you need to know to uh, pass the BJCP entrance exam. But it's not really meant for this class. So um, homework, everybody, look up decoction mashing. All right, so history. You guys can pause and read if you want. Care some ingredients: Munich and Vienna malts. So that's like the base uh, malt of Germany. Rarely a tiny bit of dark roasted malt for color adjustment. Never any non-malt adjuncts. So no corn, no rice. No oats. Hmm. Continental European hop varieties are used. Clean German lager yeast. Stock comparison, darker with a richer multi flavor and less apparent bitterness than a Hellesbach. Less alcohol and multi rich than a Doppelbach, which we'll do next week. Stronger malt flavors and higher alcohol than a Marzen, which, like Oktoberfest beer. Yum. Richer, less attenuated, and less hoppy than a Czech amber lager. I don't think you were here for that, but... Anyway, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any of these. I love that one, Ass Bach. Ass Bach. <laughs> and your Bach. So this is another one from Sounderklaas Lipzig. This just says, this says Dunkler Bach, not Dunkel's Bach. It's 6.7 ABV. This is the only example I could find. And I thought about getting Shiner Bach, like, to do as a head-to-head, but Shiner Bach isn't really a Bach. That's just the name that they use also not very good yeah like the specs for this style says 6.3 to 7.2 and china box like 4.6 i think this is the first time we've talked over the pouring yeah not really using the right glasses but um we're both using the saint bernardus sampler glasses so you know for experiment's sake no difference in glasses so let's give this thing a whiff Hmm. It's much breadier than the the Hellas. It has like a sourdough bread quality to it for me. Yeah, it's not sour though. What do you it, mean it's, sourdough? It's it's a very specific smell. Like you, I can just like and this doesn't make sense, but I, like I can smell the darkness in this one. Like it just yeah. It just has like that more bready. I guess it's like bread crust, like whole wheat bread crust. Yeah, if you went into this blind, you would know it was a dark. I can't pick up any hops on the aroma, though. None. I don't think you really need I mean, there's maybe like an earthiness. I do get like a little bit of like a fruity esters on this one. Mm-hmm. You smell like kind of just an essence of... It's hard to pick out like any one fruit, but... It's oh, just... it's like overripe fruit. Really? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's check the specs on aroma. Medium to medium high, rich, bready, malty aroma, often with moderate amounts of rich Maillard products or toasty overtones. Mm -hmm. Virtually no hop aroma. Okay. There you go. Some alcohol may be noticeable. I didn't get any alcohol. Clean lager character. Yep. Although a slight dark fruit character is allowable. Wow. Mm -hmm. This thing is nailing on all cylinders. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to go pretty high on this one. I wish we had something to compare it to, but I'm going to say 11. I think it's on. I'll give it a 12. Perfect okay. score. Yeah, we need something to compare it to, but... True. All right, so for appearance, I'm not sure how this looks on camera. I would call it... It's kind of like a copper red. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely... I mean, it looks brown, but... It's a, it has that deep, um, you know, clarity. Yeah. Or, like, just deep color. Yeah. And it foamed up a little when we poured it. I think maybe it's just the shape of the glass or the lack of cleanliness of the glass while there's that much foam. Yeah. But I'm surprised how much red is in this one, actually. Yeah, it actually kind of looks like a burgundy wine or something. Yeah, it's very red. Yeah. All right, let's check the specs on appearance. Light copper to brown color, often with attractive garnet highlights. Yeah. Yeah, I would say garnet. Good clarity despite the dark color. Large, creamy, persistent off-white head. All right, so it does say large, creamy, persistent, and this is this is not so. I'm going <laughs> to give this a two. Yeah, a two as well. There's no good I, head on this. These glasses should be clean. I mean, I think this is an old bottle, but probably it's still on. It's on. I didn't. It didn't smell old. So, here's the best part. Prost. 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 Hmm. All right. Well, the first thing I noticed is that I actually got some hops on here, mm -hmm. even though you can't really smell them. Yeah. Um, that dark fruit that we had on the smell, mm -hmm. definitely pick that up on here. Yeah, in fact, I would say it's actually, I think I would say it's more fruity than bready. Like, it's not like a rich... Yeah. Because um, like, the fruit was the first thing I noticed on this. Yeah. There's a sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, 6.7, so, I mean, it's strong, but it's not exactly like an imperial style, but it's way stronger than a standard lager or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the ABV on this? 6.7. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was higher, actually. I know. If it was like 9.7, well, which is next week, Dunkelbach, or sorry, Doppelbach. Um, yeah, it's a, a, a tasty combination. I'd say like of the fruity esters, mm -hmm. bready malt, and actually there's some, I get uh, some hops on here too. Yeah. To me, it tastes like definitely like it tastes high alcohol to me actually hmm i think you're just more sensitive to alcohol than i am you probably yeah um it what's yeah, actually what's kind of throwing me off is that the mouthfeel on this is a little thin but i mean we'll save that for a minute but because mm -hmm. like i'm just looking at it i'm thinking like big huge beer like um belgian double or quad or something yeah and then it's like such like a light uh body yeah. But yeah, I uh, fruity, bready, and even a little hoppy. So. And dry. I think it's pretty dry. Yeah, it finishes. This is not like a super sweet beer. Mm -mm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even. It's not a super dry beer either. But I would say it finishes dry. But you know, yeah. so it's it's weird because like it's the taste of fruitiness, but without like sweetness. I think it's a good balance because you don't get sick of it. It's not cloying. Yeah. All right, let's check the specs for flavor. Medium to medium high, complex, rich maltiness is dominated by toasty, rich merit products. All right, well, it starts at medium, and I would probably say this one is medium. Some dark caramel, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't even, like, it says medium to medium high, so it doesn't even go as high as, like, you know, intense richness or anything. Some dark caramel notes may be present. Okay. Hot bitterness is generally only high enough to support the malt flavors, allowing a bit of malty sweetness to linger into the finish. Mm, I'm not really getting a lingering malty finish, but... Mm. Well attenuated, not cloying. Yeah, I agree with that. Clean fermentation profile. The malt can provide a slight dark fruit character. No hot flavor, no roasted, burnt, or dry biscuity character. Mm. Well, actually, I think I get like a tiny little bit of like an earthy hop or something on here. Really? Just like it's just a standard kind of dry bitterness that, yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's good for the style. I don't think it the taste hits the specs quite as well as the aroma did, but 
I'm gonna go. I'm thinking sixteen or seventeen. I'll say seventeen. I'll do a seventeen as well. Okay. It's close, but. Okay. Mouthfeel. Mouthfeel. I already talked about this. Well, yeah, it's not heavy at all. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's like medium tops. Yeah. I don't know if I go as far as say medium light, but you know, it's just not some kind of syrupy thing that you might be thinking. It's actually not super highly carbonated either. Like the head is just fizzling away. <laughs> what do you think? Agreed. Medium. Medium, yeah. I'd say medium, car medium body and kind of medium light carbonation. Yeah. I get. I, I don't pick up on the alcohol at all. Really, are you getting warmth or anything? A little bit. Really? But yeah. I think mean, you're just more sensitive than I am. Probably. All right. Let me check the specs. Uh, mouthfeel. Medium to medium full bodied, moderate to moderately low carbonation. Okay. Some alcohol warmth may be found, but should never be hot. Mm -hmm. Smooth without harshness or astringency. All right. Well, that's just hitting at everything there. It said moderate to moderately low. Yeah. Yeah. I think they nailed it. Yeah. So as far as um form it's like you know i'm gonna go the full five on that yeah the same that's a five and what's funny is it, to me like this thing's scoring pretty high across the board but to me it's still not it doesn't seem like a world-class beer to me but I, I think i'm gonna drop this down to like 15 um so i'm gonna say this could go seven or eight I'll, you know i'm gonna say seven that's that's an even forty. All right. What well, I have nothing to really compare it to because I don't really know what to compare yeah. the spear to. So we compare it to the specs. <laughs> when you say seven, I was like going to do a nine, but now I'm like, should I bump it down? Um, I think from what I know, what I've experienced, it's a um, very good overall right. nine. Nine. Yeah. It's based on the average. So wow. yeah, that's a huge discrepancy there. Yeah. So I think you're. If this was a real competition, we'd have to like meet in the middle. I tried to talk you down to about a forty-three. I mean, I could, I could, meet, I can go forty-one, but yeah, I could probably go down on flavor. <laughs> All right, student, what did you learn about the Dunkel's box style? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's decoction mash? Decoction mash is where you boil some and you remove it, and then you boil it again. Yes, you take some, you drain some of the mash, boil it, and then put it back into the mash. Yeah, so you reuse it. Yeah, kind of skip a step that way. It's very weird, but maybe next time Brett's on, he can explain it because. Yes. Yeah. Please. I've never like I homebrewed and I never use that technique. I, a lot of people don't find it much to be gained. But anyway, that's for another story for another sermon. All right, so thanks to Christina for coming over. Of course. And we'll see you next week for Doppelbach. Cheers. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. 